This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It's my pleasure to introduce a very special gentleman. He is Dr. Alan Goldsmith, president and founder of the Jewish Renaissance Family of Organizations Foundations and also, also the author of a book called The Five Cent Miracle. Good to see you, Alan. Thank you very much for having me. Um, by the way, The Five Cent Miracle, what is it? It's a story actually about how we got from um, it working in the charity and my grandfather. My grandfather came from Europe and um, my both parents had to work. And so one day um, I, I came to my grandfather's house and he said, Boychik. Boychik in, in Yiddish means young man. That's a good term. He says, you know, open your hand up. And I opened my hand up and he put a nickel in. He says, come Boychik, we're going to get some candy. And so he took my hand and we started to go around the corner and he stopped. And there was a man with no legs in a wheelchair with a tin cup and pencils. And I was six years old. And so he says to me, well, what are you going to do with your nickel? And I said, Gramp, I'm going to get candy. You know, the one with the dots on it, you know, with the candy. You know? He says, I know, but do you think that he could use your nickel more? And I thought about it, you know, five, six year olds, candy. But I thought, you know, I'd rather get a pat on the head from my grandfather and a kiss on the cheek. I said, OK, Gramp, I'll give him my nickel. So he took my hand. And he walked over to the man. I put the nickel in. And this man just looked at me. Um, and this was back in 1956. A nickel right. was worth a lot of money. And he said, thank you, young man. And he looked at my grandfather. And he says, you're truly teaching him the ways of the Almighty. And my grandfather was very humble. He said, if you're going to do something, give somebody something, put it in an envelope, stick it under the door, and run away. So he nodded his head. He took my hand, and we started walking. And then all of a sudden, I felt something wet on my face. And I looked up. And I said, Gramp, Gramp, why are you crying? I gave him my nickel. He says, I know, these aren't tears of sorrow, but tears of joy. Mm -hmm. And he pointed to my heart and says, you just lit one candle. And that one candle can light thousands and thousands more. Yeah. And here we are sitting today. And we developed four organizations under the Jewish Renaissance Foundation. The, the Jewish Renaissance Families Organizations Foundation. And also, that's uh, part of the reason why you won the 2014 New Jersey Governor's Jefferson Award for public service with our partners and good friends at PNC um, who told us all about you because they're big partners um, with the Jefferson Awards and we see you right there and it, it's really good stuff. Um, it, what was it like winning the Jefferson Award? Well, I, I, I like to say that I was the, the person that went up and got the award. Um, I have over 285 uh, 285 staff members through all our organizations, and they're the ones that truly deserve that award, not me. I mean, I kind of guide and, and show people, and they take the nuts and bolts and put everything together. So what I was. What does your organization do? Our organizations, um, there are four organizations. Um, the Jewish Renaissance Foundation, which was started about 20 years ago, is our social agency. We're a community action agency, we're a family success center. Um, we do international missions all over the, uh, the world. Um, I was a good In Haiti as well? In Haiti, yes. We, um, we actually, um, I was asked by the Consul General, I was a former Goodwill Ambassador at the United Nations Economic and Social Council, and we went right after the earthquake and we developed a, um, a school. Um, Merck gave us a grant. Right now. Yes, uh, that's my little girl. Every time I come, I have to bring her licorice. <laughs> uh, and we developed a school. We have 100 children there. You, you um, developed a school in Haiti? In Haiti, yes. Um, we were there. My director of the, our international program was Haitian. He was a former commissioner, uh, Yves, Yves Theodore. Um, and this school was there. They wanted us to, t to take it over. And we did. We built a school. The school was 100 children in like a garage, no water. Mm -hmm. and no toilet. And so we built this uh, thanks to the Merck's uh, grant. And um, I just got word the other day that 100% uh, of our children, 100 children, passed the, ex the national exam. You also do things, not just in Haiti, but you build school-based health clinics as well? Correct. We are the largest school-based health center in the state of New Jersey. What does that mean? Uh, that means that we, we have right now six school-based health centers in Newark schools. Um, and what the are we new, looking at right now? We're looking at, this is our grand opening of the uh, school, our, our, our community health center in Central High School. 
Mm. And this is our grand opening. It just opened up. Um, we have pediatrics. We do internal medicine. We have dental. This is our bus that wow. goes around. It's a dental and medical bus um, that goes around thanks to Horizon. Horizon Blue Cross. Uh, they, they definitely one gave of our them. great underwriters and supporters. And one of our big supporters also. And they helped to fund that bus. And we have two of those that go around. We do the camps during the underprivileged camps. Our, our, our community health centers are um, are um, basically um, for underserved and uninsured uh, children. Now, the distinguish that we have, we have six of those, and then we have our, our large 50,000 square facility in Perth Amboy. We were the first faith-based, federally qualified healthcare center um, in the country, um, which was fantastic. It's a big deal. Yeah. But you also work with boys and girls clubs and organizations like that. Uh, we, we saw a, a tremendous need. Um, during the summer, um, a young girl had passed away, uh, in, drowned in a pool. And if you remember in Camden, possibly, um, three children were playing in a, uh, in a car. They got locked in the trunk and perished. I said, we really need to have something for our children. And so we have two boys and girls clubs, one in Perth Amboy. We have one in, in, in Carteret. They do fantastic work. Um, we're, we're proud. Our step team had won the state championship, and they were invited to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And um, they, want, they took fourth place throughout the whole country. So from Carteret, it was it just you, fantastic. What do you get out of this? I get chills right now just talking about it. But I'm going back to, to, to where my grandfather is, and we lit all these candles. We have are saying that it's our credo throughout all our organization and that's we're all one people with one heart say that again we're all one people with one heart and that means basically god put us on his earth for a reason and it's to help other people neighbors helping neighbors and that's why we're doing this i mean i've helped i've helped people that were homeless we, we gave them jobs they just needed they need a chance and helping people. I mean, we had a lady come in, was crying because her child uh, was sick and, she, and, and didn't know what was wrong with her. And she came back and says, Dr. Goldsmith, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, all I needed was an antibiotic because she didn't have money. She didn't have money to come in. Do you think a lot of this, most of this, if not all of it, came from what your grandfather taught you? 100%. 100%. 100%. Because of the nickel that he gave you, you want to get candy, you put it in the cup of this guy who is on the street in 1956, you think that's what it comes from? Th that and my upbringing from my parents. Um, we, were always, we were always giving. Um, they, we were always taught to, to give to charity. Um, when I was, in, when I was in just graduating college, I, I joined the Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in the Peace Corps for two years in Venezuela. This is going back, way back when it was almost right. started, 1970. I, I get, there's nothing better in my feeling that you get from helping somebody. Um, so, so I got to ask you something. Yes. With a lot of people struggling today to make ends meet, dealing with difficult economic situations or difficult economic situation, and they say, "Listen, I appreciate everything you're saying, but I got to take care of my own. Got to take care of myself, and my family. I can't be worrying about someone else. I feel for them, but I can't be dealing with that." You say. I say, there's always. There's always a road that you can help somebody, whether, whether it's helping an, uh, uh, an older person across the street, picking up bags. There's a story that, that, that happened um, to me where uh, a young man had, had come into my office and needed, um, needed $100. And he said, I've been all over to the churches and I've been to the synagogues. And they told me to come to see you. And I'm saying, well, you know what, I'm, I'm not a bank. But you know what, well, well, what's the problem? He says, I'm laid off this during the summers, and I'm a janitor. I promise, Dr. G, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And I thought, I hope he's not going to buy drugs or, or booze. You didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. But I said, all right. He said, oh, I promise. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And I said, well, I don't know if I'm going to get the money back or not, but guess what? Here's what I want you to do. I said, I want you to help somebody like I'm helping you. It doesn't have to be with money. But the way you pay me back is you have to let me know what you did. Hmm. Two months went away. I, I, I forgot about it. Go ahead. And he sent me an email. Dr. G, uh, my debt's paid. I said, OK. And I'm reading the email. And it says, um, I was in the supermarket, and, and, and an elderly person with a walker dropped the bag, and I picked it up. I said, I hope that wasn't the whole $100 was. And um, she told me she needed a, um, a, a ramp. She couldn't get up her steps. So I bought the wood, and I went ahead and built a ramp. And I told her what had happened, and my debt is paid. 
and I, and I was crying reading that. But it didn't stop there. The lady found out, got my telephone number, called me up, and she was typing Braille. And she donated one month of, of free Braille to the, to the Braille library. So a little act, yeah. look, where, look where it could go. And that's what the book's really about, is paying it forward. There it is, pay it forward. A five cent miracle. Uh, Dr. Alan Goldsmith, uh, before I let you out here real quick, sure. the number one leadership lesson that you've learned in all your life is? Is a life is worth living if it's lived to help others. Good stuff. Alan, keep doing what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Stay right there. Thank you. This is One on One. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by PNC Bank, Holy Name Medical Center, Berkeley College, Qualcare Inc., the Russell Berry Foundation, Cone Resnick, and by the Ohlendorf Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.